Okay, hey, let's see if we can really get the joke. Hold on. It's 9 1, properties of parallelograms, what we're doing today. I will zoom back out here in a minute, but I mean, number one, look at the joke. Now, Logan's talking so much over there, like he must be explaining the joke to someone. Okay, ye old math shop where X is never unknown. Get it? Like, you don't usually know X, but here, you, everyone knows X. Everyone knows its name, dude. <laughs> Professional trigonometrist on the premises. Nice. Quadratic equations are our specialty. See, Fermat's last theorem demonstrated at 2.30. Free square root extraction with a purchase over $50. Man, I know. That is awesome. I know. Fresh prime numbers daily. All arithmetic done while you wait. Man, this is a great shot. All right, you guys didn't find it as entertaining as I did. I wish it was real because then I could just. I think that I think you can find that place in Leavenworth. All right, right next to the hat shop. I know. Okay, here we go. Give yourself some time. I want you to define parallelogram using the back of your book. Draw and label picture to describe each theorems nine, one, two, and three and four. All right, here we go. Let's talk about these theorem nine. Dash. Well, first of all, what is a parallelogram? Yep. A quadrilateral is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. Dude, she's like stole your man. <laughs> all right, a quad. That's four sides with two pairs of parallel sides. Grace, I was impressed at how you threw your voice. It sounded like Kira. That was amazing work. Well I don't even know what happened. I'm really confused. Uh, I, I called on Grace and then I didn't care. But that's okay. I, think <laughs> I wasn't specific enough. I should have said Grace's name. I thought you were calling on everybody so that like someone would just oh. yell oh. it out. Oh, okay. Well, that's all right. All right, so <laughs> theorem 9-1. This is not what the theorems look like. However, we're going to add to these. Logan, how are you doing? Why do I always look over there and when I'm talking, you guys are talking? What are you guys watching? What are you watching, Izzy? Thanks. All right. <laughs> Stay focused here, right? Okay. So theorem 9-1. Theorem 9-1 says opposite sides of a parallelogram are? I'm asking you guys. Opposite sides of a parallelogram. Anyone? Congruent. Yes, they are congruent. All right. So that would mean a picture could be like if we had A, B, C, D, just because we're creative like that, we could have AB congruent to CD and AC congruent to DC. Now remember, or CB, excuse me, remember that one mark means it's congruent to the other one with one mark. Two marks means it's congruent with the other one, two marks. Okay. Questions? All right, next one. Theorem 9-2 says opposite angles are congruent. Zach, you agree? You sure? Would you bet your grade on it? You should never bet, Zach. I'm just saying. Okay. But the answer is yes, Zach agrees. Okay. A is congruent to C. You should see you could see it like that. You could also see it like that. Okay, you could have one marking in the angle. Okay? You have angle B, congruent to angle D. Opposite angles of parallelograms are congruent. Opposite sides are congruent. Ethan, what do we have for theorem 9-3? Diagonals of a parallelogram. I'm going to abbreviate parallelogram with that. Bisect each other. Everyone tell your neighbor what it means to bisect. I could bisect Haley. Oh, jeez. Man, that's tough, Haley. Golly. I mean, like. We will have none of that. All right. Diagonals bisect each other. What do diagonals bisecting each other mean? Logan. They cut each other in half. That means 
<laughs> if I add A, B, C, D, and we'll call this F. F just because we want to skip E, okay? We have something against E, I guess. Okay? That would mean that AE, since they. Oh, well, we have to now because I can't erase. So AE is congruent to. Is it EC or CE? We'll go CE, yes. A corresponds to C. Okay? And. D E is congruent to to B. Hey, that's when a D could look like a B. Yeah. Huh, get it? D looks like B. D looks like. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's you know it's the force. Okay. All right. Very good. Any questions? All right, last one. Theorem 9-4. Theorem 9-4 says what? Go ahead and tell your neighbor what Theorem 9-4 says. It's right, and you know if your answer's not on there, then you must have <coughs> Okay, 9-4. If three or more lines, if three or more parallel lines cut off congruent segments on one transversal, then they cut off congruent segments on every transversal. So in other words, if I have three or more parallel lines, and on those three parallel lines, a transversal crosses through, and those segments are congruent. If A is congruent to B, or excuse me, if AB is congruent to BC or CB, then I automatically know that any other transversal that cuts through those will also cut off congruent segments. Not congruent to these, but congruent to each other. That's what this theorem says. I get it. That's fancy. It is pretty fancy. Well, I used, um, I used a computer to come up with the segments in the parallel line. That's how fancy we get. All right. Okay, so once again, three or more parallel lines cut off by a transversal. If it forms congruent segments on one transversal, with those parallel lines, then it'll con form congruent segments in every transversal, those parallel lines. Okay. Questions? All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some of our assignment together. Here it is. That's the first part. Now, I think I'll hand out the assignment. Now, I didn't hand it out at the beginning of class because, unfortunately, in this class, I, ha I actually had it on this chair. It was right there. And right before you guys, before you guys started lining up the door, I grabbed it and put it away. Because some students, as soon as in this class, this is the one class, when I hand out the assignment, I sometimes lose four or five students. They automatically just don't do any of the notes. They just say, I'm doing the work. And then they get into the work and they go, I don't get this. Well, did you do the notes? No. Well, I'm like, well, that's why. Okay? Just saying, if that's you. You're why I didn't hand it out yet. But this is what, number one, okay, example one. I'll start handing out the assignment while you're looking at it, talking about it with your... Let's have your attention up here. Two things. First, okay, three things. First, when I ask for it, within five seconds, I need the attention. Second, Vogel's class taking a quiz, or excuse me, a chapter test on logs. So unless you want to take that test and be graded on that, you got to keep it down a bit. Okay? You'll get it next year in trig, by the way. Third thing, this little symbol right here means parallelogram. So you're given that parallelogram, meaning you're given all the properties that could, or excuse me, you're given a parallelogram, meaning you can start stating different properties that go along with that. Yeah? You actually have to write it out. And you can abbreviate. You can't say theorem 9-1. Yep. Got it. Okay. Very good. Go at it, please. Work with your groupie. Try to fill out as many of the reasons as you can. It's the worst. That is the worst. This is the worst. If you ever get a chance, watch Tim Hawkins and his bit that said, this is the worst. It's pretty, pretty good.
I never got it in my told me not to touch the electric you fence. You don't still do that, do you? No, I don't. Okay. Because I didn't listen. I touched the electric fence because I was like, fine. And I didn't feel like listening to him. I told him he wasn't my boss. Learning the hard way. It. And then I fell to the ground. Like, you should have been my boss. Right. He was so mad at me, but at the same time he was laughing because I was on the ground, like, crying. All right. Here we go. Number one. How many got given? Given, yeah. Okay. Number two. Definition of parallelogram. Okay, if this one. Okay, parallel lines by definition. Number three, parallel lines by definition. Yes. Number four, alternate interior angles. So angle one congruent to four. So that congruent to that by alternate interior. Okay. No such thing as opposite angles. Alternate interior. Okay. So we have our transversal cutting across here. Okay, we have our parallel line and parallel line. And then we can do the same thing on the other. We have two parallel or congruent to three because alternate interior of this parallel and that parallel. Okay. And then we get reflexive property RT to should actually be TR. TR, unbelievable is what I say. Okay. And then we get QRT to STR by angle side angle. And then the final statement is CP, CT, C. Corresponding parts. Congru corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Corresponding parts, congruent triangles are congruent. Very good. Questions? Yes, Bethany? All right. Thank you for not asking what the assignment is. All right. Number two. Number two. Use a blank proof, which we'll just call a proof, to prove that diagonals PU. That stinks. And LM of a parallelogram plum bisect each other at E. Yes. Yes, I would put this one in my note page. This one's amazing. Amazingly good for notes. Okay? So you're given plum, parallelogram plum. You want to describe PU and LM bisect each other at E. Go for it. Hey. You guys can't use the, to prove this, you're not allowed to use the theorem that says that, the, that in a parallelogram they bisect. We're trying to prove oh. that theorem. I guess I should have been more specific. You're trying to prove the theorem that <laughs> diagonals bisect each other. So you can't actually use that theorem to prove itself. That's what I was using the last one. I know. That is sad. So get as far as you can. I know. <laughs> Think, think through it first, right, though? I mean, if you're trying to prove that this, this line bisects this line, if you could somehow prove that this side and this side are congruent and this side and this side are congruent, then you could use, by definition of a bisector or bisecting lines, okay? Think through it backwards, okay? Might help you out. Question? All right, moving on. Statements and reasons. Next year you will. Statements. Reasons. Now, I will tell you, I have graded half of your tests. Like, I've graded the front page. I haven't graded the back yet. On all of them. So I'm through all your proofs, except for the ones where you just had to list the reasons on all those different triangle shapes. Okay? Pretty well. Um, some of my concerns, some of you still did not number your reasons. That's ridiculous. There's only one or two of you. Okay. Um, that was one problem. Um, there was another problem that's I'm missing right now, but I will come back to it as soon as I remember it. It's like, what in the world? But tried to block it out. Like, I think I mixed that up. I was doing backwards things. Like, I would do like M, E, M, E. Yeah, some of that was there. Like backwards. No, we'll talk about it later. So we got plum. Plum is a parallelogram. parallelogram. That is given. given. Okay. 
All right, so let's kind of have a plan of attack here. Okay, if we can somehow prove that, say, like um, this triangle is congruent to this triangle, or this triangle is congruent to that triangle, we could then use CPCTC, right? Corresponding part. Okay, actually, we wouldn't even need that because we'd have these sides. Okay, most likely. We could use CPCTC if we need to, but then we could use by definition of bisecting lines. Okay, so if we could prove this side somehow congruent to that side and that one congruent to that side, then we could use definition of bisecting lines. So let's try to prove, say, this triangle right here congruent to that one. Did anyone else do that? All right, good. How many of you proved the other two congruent or tried that? How many just didn't know where to go? You're like, I'm stuck. Can you do angle PEM is congruent to LEU because vertical? Okay, yeah. Angle P, let's start with that one. Angle PEM is congruent to angle. So P corresponds to what one? U. So U E L. Okay, by vertical angles. Okay, very good. So now we have these angles. What else do we have? Go ahead, Haley. Um, the um, angle EPM is congruent to um, LUE because that's the alternate thing to EPM to LUE? I should probably do say that. Do we have to say that they're parallel first? EP. Like yeah. Oh, yeah, we should, yeah. Yeah, so we should actually say number three. You're saying PM con parallel to LU? Yeah. We're going to have to squeeze that one in there. Sorry, I totally That's right. To that. <laughs> By definition of a, or you could say opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, or by definition of, Parallel. not of a, of a parallelogram. It's such a big word. Parallelogram. Okay. All right, now we have number four, and it's squeezed in there because we started putting three in. So EPM is congruent to. LUE. L -U -E. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we've got our parallel lines now. We're marking those down. L U E by alternate interior angles. Good job. <coughs> Very good. So now what do we have? Go ahead, Bethany. Reflexive. Reflexive. For which ones? So I think we're trying to work at these triangles, right? So we don't I don't think we don't have any common sides or angles in that. We can't use reflexive there. Others? Oh, okay, cool. Hmm. Roy? Okay, we've got to have one more piece because right now we only have an angle and a, we have two angles, so we need a side. Um, that's parallel. We could say that side. Good, yeah, we could say that. Yeah, so let's go ahead and say that PM congruent to UL because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent or you could use definition of a parallelogram. Okay, so now we have that and that. Okay? And so now we could state our triangles, right? Because we have we have an angle, we have an angle, and we have a side. Angle angle side. Okay, so by angle angle side, we know that PEM 
is congruent to U E L. Why? We go corresponding pieces. That, if we cut it out and laid it on top of the, that one would line up with that one. All right. Now what? Cameron. P E is congruent to U E by C P C T C. Could we add the other one in there then? Could we say that, are we going to say this one the same thing? Yeah, so let's go ahead and ME is congruent to LE by the same thing. So I'm just going to add that here. ME is to LE. Okay, we, so we have both those CPCTC. Okay? And so the last one is? PU. Ooh. And <laughs> LM bisect each other at E. And how come? Definition of bisecting lines. Good job. Get, the proofs get longer because you guys are getting more advanced in math. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're getting smarter. That's just what happens. I like the four steps. You don't want, I don't want to be smarter. I like when all we were improving was the triangle if they were it. All right, I'm sorry. I know. And now that's just an extra step. And remember the good old days. Yeah. Good old days. Every new thing that we learn, like CPCTC and all this stuff, and this is terrible. All right. Hey, we're recording, so everyone say hey to people. Hi. Hi. Say, uh, PU. Uh, <laughs> All right, very good. How you doing? Uh, who's absent? Hey, Megan. Megan. Megan, 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 Megan. Megan. I miss you. Hallie's absent. Say hey to Hallie. Hey, Hi, Hallie. Hi, Hallie. Uh, who else? Other Megan. Megan. Other Megan. 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 Jackson. Yeah, a lot of people gone. All right. All right, we got six of you. We missed you. We still missed you. All right. Nine dash one, mixed side. That is your assignment. Go at it. Nothing else on the example, just the mix. Hey, everyone's right here. Initial questions that came up. First, like on number two. X minus four is pointing to this segment from here to here. Okay, 28 is this segment from here to here. All right. Use properties of parallelograms. Okay. Any other questions just looking at it that have come to your mind? You're like, huh? I know you haven't spent a lot of time on it. I'm sure some questions will come up. This X is from here to here. Yes? Like here? Yeah. Is this equal to this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, good idea. That's good thinking. Neato. It is neato burrito. Don't be afraid of fractions. Kira is just talking about how much she loved them, so that's good. So number 22. They're lame actions. No, that would work. Or? <laughs> More actions because they're boring. Come on. Okay, I have everyone's attention up here real quick. All right. Hey, a question that came up a few times was on number number 23 here. Okay, TR is 14. That means from here to here is 14. And then they also say that ME is 31. And so the logic started being, well, if this is 14, that makes this 14, so then TI is 28. That's true. And ME is 31. And Sometimes it gets confusing. You start thinking, well, this has to be the same length as that. That's not true. Okay, they just have to bisect. So that means if this is 14, all that means is that this also is 14. They don't, these two diagonals don't have to be the same length. In fact, if they are the same length, 
that proves that it's a rectangle. Okay, proves it's a rectangle, which we get into later in the chapter. Okay, good job.